my father used to work in a ski resort. And my dad worked as a computer programmer in Mammoth Mountain Ski Resort. My father was a computer programmer became, before he became an activist. My father, for many years, was a computer programmer. For about 20 years, my dad worked as a computer programmer, and my father also ran hot dog carts. And he would tell me about bears, and he would say... He would say, you know, stay away from bears. And he would say, stay away from the wilderness because there's bears there. <laughs> so he, would t he told me this story one time. He would tell me all sorts of stuff about bears. He would say, you know, bears can smell you for tens of miles, dozens of miles. For dozens of miles, bears can smell you. They can, they can snip. Oh, okay. My cat started meowing. I was wondering why. He would tell me that bears could track you down. Even, even if you are dozens of miles away from it, a bear can sniff you out. And so he would tell me to stay away from the wilderness. And he told me this story. I never forget it. He told me this story many years ago. He told me this story about when he was working in Mammoth Mountain Ski Resort, there was a park ranger who had gone missing. There was a park ranger who had gone missing. And they went out looking for him. And they sent a search team to go out and look for him. And the only thing that they could find was his boots. They found a pair of boots, which were his boots. And they picked up the boots and they could see his feet inside the boots that was all that was left of this guy were his feet in the boots because he had been eaten by a bear so my father always told me to, to stay away from the wilderness he said never go to the wilderness don't go camping out in the wilderness don't do dumb shit like that because you can get yourself killed and bears will track you down there's a great movie that you can watch oh man it has um dude this is Okay. Yeah, this is this is like some scarab music or something. Anyway, um there's a great there's a great movie with Anthony Hopkins that came out many years ago. It's a it's a movie called The Edge. Guys, if you the best film ever on people trying to escape a bear is called the edge it, it's it was made in 1997 i remember seeing this film back in the 90s and it's still a great movie it came out in 1997 it came out in 1990 <laughs> it came out in 1997 and it's about these three guys who are trying to escape a grizzly bear and the grizzly bear tracks them down for miles and i remember seeing that film as a kid and my dad telling me that's how bears are they will hunt your ass down they don't mess around so he would tell me to stay away from the wilderness he would say don't go to the the revenant was an amazing film the revenant is to, to me the revenant is one of the greatest films ever made truly revenant masterpiece but the Revenant is not about a bear. There is a scene where a man gets attacked by a bear. And I will say, that is the greatest scene ever depicting a bear attack ever made. But the film is not about a bear. That's a part, right? It just shares a scene of the film. But the movie The Edge from 1997 is about three guys trying to escape a bear. And I am not going to spoil it. Vehicle Simich, please. Please. <laughs> Revenant was a masterpiece. I absolutely that movie was so good, guys. Oh my god, that movie was so good. The scene where he sees the Native American guy and they stick their tongue out, their tongues out to get the snowflakes is it, it's such an emotional scene, very emotional scene. And the scene where he's starving and then he sees the guy eating the the dead animal and then he eats the flesh of the dead animal and he's just doing anything to survive. It's a masterpiece. And and the la the fight scene in the end, oh my it's so dramatic. It's such an emotional movie. 
it's such an emo it's it's an emotional movie guys and it's beautifully directed the the texture and the and the color of the movie was so it was so damn good i remember seeing that movie back in 2014 and i thought oh my god what a masterpiece what i did why can't every movie just be like this that bear in the movie the edge actually a kodiak it's a kodiak bear okay Aren't Kodiaks and Grizzlies kind of the same thing? Or are, are maybe are or are Kodiaks bigger? What about the man in Alaska who was friends the man in Alaska who was friends with the bears he loved? Yeah, I know the story you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, the guy there was a guy, uh I forgot his name. He was Man eaten by bears. Guys, I didn't prepare at all for this stream. I wasn't even expecting to do it today, to be honest with you. But here we are. I, you know, Man eaten by bear. Timothy Treadwell. That was his name. There is a recording, an audio recording, because his wife, I think, was holding the camera. His girlfriend. They both were eaten, by the way. Uh, girlfriend was holding the camera, and then... Or he was holding the camera, I don't remember. But somebody was holding the camera, okay? Bears attacked... The bear attacked them. The camera was dropped. And all you could hear are the screams of the man being eaten alive. And they have the recording somewhere. And for the life of me, I have never been able to find it. If someone can tell me how to find it, I'll... I'll let me know. I've never heard it. But the guy was eaten alive. And, and I told my dad about the story. And my dad said, what an idiot. My, zero sympathy from my father. Zero sympathy. I told him the story about about Treadwell, and he said, "Oh, what a moron!" My dad told me. Uh, my dad told me I worked at a ski resort for year in, in, in the Mammoth Mountain, and uh, I heard stories about bears, and I heard the story about the park ranger who got eaten alive by a bear. And I, I don't mess with them animals. And if you go out of your way to mess with a bear, and he eats you, I don't think you deserve sympathy. It's not like you were just minding your own business and then ISIS popped up and beheaded you. You know what I'm saying? That's not what happened. You went out to their environment. Bears don't bother humans, by the way. The bears don't go out, oh, I'm going to go into the city and go terrorize humans. Like Bears just are just in their environment. And, and they don't like people messing with them. And if you go into their environment and you mess with them... <sighs> God help you. I don't think God would help you, to be honest with you, because because you're doing something you're not you're not supposed to be doing. But my dad also would tell me when I was a kid, because he would tell me about bears and how scary they are. And I remember I was in California, and I was probably like nine or ten years old, and my dad would tell me about bears and how scary they were. So I would always ask him, oh, tell me more about the bears and tell me more about the bears, the bears, the bears, the bears, the bears. And <laughs> and he would tell me, he would, he would say, there is an animal that is scarier than a bear. You know what that is? What? The human being. The human being is the scariest animal in the world. There is nothing scarier than a human being. Nothing. There is nothing more terrifying than a human being. I think human beings, sometimes they can be scarier than viruses. I think human beings are scarier than COVID. And when the whole COVID thing popped up back in 2020 and we were all freaking out, I think, I think America just grew a new brain after that. I think the whole world just developed a new brain. The whole collective consciousness of humanity. I think we just developed a new brain after going through after 2021. I think we all just got new brains. Our brains just reached a new level of advancement and development after that. Because that horrified the shit out of everybody. That whole COVID thing. We were all terrified of it. And then we went through it and millions of people died. And then we're, we were like, oh my god. I can't believe we actually survived that. That was crazy. It was just absolutely crazy. I remember going to the grocery store and there were crowds of people. I, it, it felt like we were in a movie, like in one of those uh, dystopian films. And they, there were there were employees everywhere and there no one packet of sugar, one person. I'm like, oh my God, is this Black Hawk down? It was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. And I, I remember all that. 
And you know, but here's the thing. In the midst of all that insanity, human beings still scared me more than COVID. I was still scared more of human beings than COVID because COVID is is a virus. It doesn't have a brain. It just attaches itself to your cells and then replicates its DNA into your cells and destroys your body. That's what COVID does, like any other virus. But here's the thing is, the reason why I was more scared of humans than I was COVID is because human beings get together and they do stuff like, hey, there's a virus out there and a lot of people are scared and only a human being can think of something like this. There's a virus out there and human beings are scared and everything's going down. Let's go out and kill people. That's what human beings do. And you look at what happened in 2020, right? 2020, the crime rate exploded in 2020. How do you explain that? The crime rate exploded in 2020. You would think, okay, virus. Everybody calm down. Let's stand together. Let's be as safe as we possibly can. Wash our freaking hands. And we'll be okay. Right? Let's let's be as as safe as we possibly can. And let's try to have the best possible outcome. Crime rate went up in 2020. Now, if you look at the crime rate of the United States, okay? You have the 1970s crime rate, which was insane. Crime rate, I don't know if you guys know this, but crime rate, the crime rate back in the 1970s was insane. It was it was like war zone level deaths. Oh my god, I love this song. I haven't heard this song in years. It's a Baroque It's a Baroque guitar song that I remember listening to many years ago and I just it's like I forgot that the song existed and then it popped up and a new memory just got unlocked. It's amazing how this stuff happens in the middle of a stream. But I think this is John Dolan. Pretty certain this is John Dolan. John Dolan was one of the first old composers that I started listening to. Old musicians. I think Dolan lived. Is this John Dolan? Or I don't know. Yep, this is John Dolan. Absolutely. Oh, damn. Awesome. John Dolan, man. One of the original. One of the old English composers from what, 17th, 17th century? When was John Dolan alive? Six, uh, is that, yeah, 17th century. Late 16th century. Okay. Yeah, he was brilliant. Brilliant guitarist. Anyway, 1970s. If you look at the 1970s, you just think everything sucked in the 70s. Everything sucked. The crime rate in America was unbelievably high. My dad came to America in the 1970s. And my dad will tell you that the America of the 70s, the America that he knew back in the 70s, was much darker and much scarier than the America that we have now. My dad will tell, will tell you that. He told me. He worked in Taco Bell. He did night shift in Taco Bell. And he said there were the Taco Bell that my dad worked at was right next to a military base. And you would have all these army guys coming over to eat tacos. Because back in the day, Taco Bell wasn't like now you chalupas and nachos. It was a taco and a burrito. That was it. So they'd come over to eat and they would always fight. That's what my dad told me. They would always fight. They would always fight. They would, they would come, and for some reason, it, he said every night we had fights. Every single night. And the crime rate was unbelievable. My dad my dad lived in Chicago in the early 80s, I want to say. And he told me that the, the murder rate in the south side of Chicago was so horrendous, cops wouldn't even go there. So the, the murder rate in America, I think... The decade that had the highest 
murder rate in the United States in the history of the U.S., I'm pretty certain was the decade of the 1970s. I could be wrong. But something happened in the 90s when things just got a whole lot more peaceful. I'm not certain why. Maybe it was the war on drugs. But I remember growing up in the 1990s, and once a week, they would have somebody come over to talk to us about the dangers of drugs. I am not joking. Every, once a week, they would have somebody come over to tell us why you shouldn't take drugs. This was back in the 90s. 90s and the early 2000s. And they would have a police officer. This was back in Northern California, hardcore Democrat state. They had a police officer come and talk to us every week, once a week. And he would tell us about why drugs are bad. He would tell us about crime, to stay away from certain people, don't make friends with certain people, stay away from the from the wrong crowds. Just logical. This, I think this mic is too loud. I'm not sure. Logical stuff. Just logical stuff, right? Stay away from bad people. Nowadays, it's the opposite, right? It's a rever you know, but even then, we had this problem. It was rap music and cholo culture and, and ghetto culture and trash culture and Eminem was out and criminality was in, in, in you know, criminality has been glorified in the, in the United States for decades. And it was just, it was just, you know, Eminem and uh, F, you know, but even, but, 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 but uh, <laughs> even before that, you had uh, NWA telling people, you know, F the police and all this crazy stuff. So, so there was this culture of criminality and it's still here, but there were people trying to fight the culture of criminality, the, the religion, the, uh, the, the cult of, of the criminal mind and the cult of the criminal mind is, I have no, I have zero accountability. I don't owe you any accountability. And in fact, if you attack me in self-defense, I am the victim. That is the cult of criminality, right there. If I had to sum it up in the in the shortest form that I can express, that's what it would be. What's good for you? Well, actually, what's terrible for you is good for me, right? You getting robbed—that's good for me. Uh, what's, what's good, what's, what's bad for me, uh, which is you fighting against me in self-defense, well, that is, uh, a crime against humanity. You know, that's how criminals think. They can rob, they can steal, but if, and they can murder, but if somebody defends themselves and attacks them in self-defense, then that person is has done this horrendous crime, and that person deserves death. And so they have their own set of laws, and they and and they want to impose their own law. That's how these people think. Anyway, so I remember we had this police officer come and talk to us, and he told us he said he said, stay away from drugs, stay away from criminals. Very simple, very simple. So there was this whole war on drugs and. And people were, but you know what? I've never really studied in an in-depth way the war on drugs. I've heard of it before, but I've never seriously studied the war on drugs. And I have heard a lot of bad things about the war on drugs. That the war on drugs was terrible, that it was racist, that it was this, you know, horrific thing. It was like the worst thing ever and blah, 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 blah. They were just arresting black people off the side of the road and all this crazy stuff. But I have heard otherwise. I've heard that the war on drugs actually worked, that it reduced the crime rate down tremendously. And I have heard that, well, that some of the Voices that were calling for the war on drugs the most were black leaders. And the and, and these black leaders were saying drugs are destroying our neighborhoods, they're they are devastating our neighborhoods, we need help. And so there was the war on drugs. And then people began to say the war on drugs is racist and it's terrible and it was so awful, but blacks were the ones calling for the war on drugs. So how how could you say that it was it obviously wasn't racist? So, anyway, something happened in the 1990s where the crime rate just went down. 
and it continued to go down. 2020 comes, and instead of people saying, okay, we have a disease, we have a pandemic, let's calm down, let's team up, let's unite together as a country. And there was unity amongst a lot of people during the COVID time, right? There were there were people who said, okay, let's help each other out, et cetera, et cetera. But my God, there were too many people saying the opposite. There were too many people saying, this is our opportunity to do more crime. And so there was a lot of people doing crimes and the murder rate just skyrocketed in 2020. And do you know when the murder rate skyrocketed? I'm pretty certain that it began to go up really high during the whole George Floyd fiasco. During the whole George Floyd thing, when everybody was saying that a criminal was a saint or they were treating a criminal as if he were a saint when, re when the reality was that he was a criminal. During that time, the murder rate went up tremendously. Do you know how many murders they had back in 2020? It was like 22,000 murders in one year. That's very high. That's a very high. Scary high. People were people people are evil. So people talk about great white sharks. Stay away from the ocean. If you don't want a great white shark biting you, biting a chunk of your ass, stay away from the ocean. Don't go surfing like a moron. People talk about grizzly bears and Kodiak bears and polar bears. Polar bears live up in where? Alaska, the North Pole. Stay away from polar. Stay away from Alaska. Don't go to Alaska. Don't go to uh, the North Pole. Oh, polar bears are the strongest bears in the world. Stay. Away. It's very easy. If you if you want to be if you want to prevent a polar bear attack, you know how you see these videos, how to prevent a bear attack, how to stay. Yeah, stay away from bears. Don't mess with them. Stay away from their environment. Don't go to the North Pole like a moron. Don't go to the wilderness of Alaska because you want to see the pristine nature of Alaska if you don't want to get messed with by bears. Don't go camping in the wilderness. Oh, uh, there's a, an octopus in Australia, the purple spotted octopus. It's, if it stings you, it'll kill you in a matter of minutes. It has the most deadliest poison that any animal can ever have. Stay away from the ocean in Australia. Easy. How do you prevent humans from coming out and trying to kill you? You go to the grocery store and you have to worry about some psychopathic, demonic person who's mad at the world because women rejected him or whatever shooting you in a mass shooting. You go to the bank you have to worry about packs of <laughs> packs of criminals with hoodies on following you to your house to rob your money. You go to the movie theater, you have to worry about some guy getting a machine gun and mowing the movie theater down. You have to worry about all these things. So the best, the best policy to have, in my opinion, is to stay away from people as much as possible. <laughs> it's to stay away from people as much as possible. Don't mess with people. Don't make a lot of friends. Don't try to have a big social circle. You're jealous because you don't have a lot of friends. Stop being jealous. That's There's nothing to be jealous about that. Oh, I wish I had a lot of friends. No, you don't. You don't wish you had a lot of friends. Because, because if you did have a lot of friends, you would realize very quickly that those people aren't your friends. Stay away from people as much as possible. So that's why when I look out the window... And I see some shirtless guy walking around. I've never seen this person before. For all I know, he could be some meth head. You know how these people are. I, I, I get a little bit worried. 
So stay away from people as much as possible because people can be very evil. They can be very, very evil. Theo, it's not the purple spotted octopus. It's the blue ringed octopus. Oh, thank you very much for the correction. It's a very, very important detail. 70s was wild. Dad told me stories, especially when he was playing music all over Texas. If he was playing music all over Texas, then yeah, he knows. You meet a lot of wild people playing music. Love the Death Wish movies. Yeah. Dirty Harry films. Yeah, those were crazy movies. I think Dirty Harry was like the... It was like John Wick before there was John Wick, right? Because John Wick and Dirty Harry are kind of similar. It's about a guy who's going out for revenge and he kills his enemies. But yeah, Dirty Harry was a reflection of America at that time. Crime infested. Full of psychopaths. 70s was also an era, 70s and 60s was also an era where when you had a lot of serial killers. A lot of serial killers, like tons of serial killers. Growing up as a Gen Z with Disney films, I always thought they were cute creatures watching from that Disney film with Bear and Little Bears and Nate. Oh, yeah, Little Bears. I stay away from bears, guys. I, I don't mess with no bears. Another thing I cannot fathom is skydiving. I, I can't fat. Why would you go skydiving? I don't understand. Why would you <laughs> Why would you want to go skydiving? I'm going to go skydiving. Why? Why? Why are you go Why are you skydiving? Why? What's the point? Why are you skydiving? You're jumping off an airplane. You're jumping out of an airplane. I heard a story about a guy who was an expert skydiver. He was an expert skydiver. And he was considered to be a master at skydiving. He was considered to be one of the best. I forgot his name. He jumped off of the plane. Because he was so used to jumping off of planes, it became second nature to him. He was so comfortable with jumping out of an airplane because he had done it so many times that he made the mistake that a lot of people do when they get comfortable with a particular process. And that is he forgot something that was very essential in skydiving, and that was his parachute. So he jumped off the plane because he did it so many times and he was so used to having a parachute there that his brain just kind of short-circuited and he forgot his parachute. And he realized that the parachute wasn't there, and he died. Why would you go skydiving? That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Skydiving? I'm going to go jump off an airplane. Why? I'm going to go parachuting. And it's always... I don't want to make this a race thing, but it's, for some reason, it's always white people getting involved in stuff like that. I don't know why. I don't see no brothers jumping off of planes. I don't see no Asians jumping off of planes. It's always white folks. Jumping off of planes. I have no idea why. Maybe it's like... I don't know why. Maybe someone can help me understand this. Bear meat is delicious. Wow. Wow. Is it, so what does it taste like? My dad used to say that to me. Man is the worst kind of... It, it, there's nothing scarier than human beings. Nothing. Nothing. You read history. You read about how... Entire Polish villages were wiped out during the Second World War. Villages with people who had been living there for generations. Wiped out by Ukrainian nationalists. They went in there with pitchforks and knives and axes and guns. They went in there and they hacked people to death and raped and just for, for fun because they wanted to. Those people had no weapons. They were not a threat to them. And they went in there to kill and rob and rape. And they did that. For years. They did that. With the help of the German Reich. The German Third Reich. And you read about Sabra and Shatila and the Lebanese Civil War. You read about massacres that have happened in, 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 recent, in recent history. You read about mass shootings and serial killers. And you're, what, what is this? What is this? 
An animal does something out of necessity. An animal does something out of instinct, right? A bear is hungry, it goes out for food. A cat is hungry, it hunts a bird, it hunts a mouse. A bird is hungry, it goes out and looks for worms and berries, and it finds things to forage, to survive. And you know, it's amazing. I remember going to the aquarium when I was a kid. They, I remember going to the one of those one of those big aquariums up there in the uh, in the Bay Area, Northern California. Could have been Monterey or San Francisco Aquarium. I don't remember one of those big aquariums. And you would go into these. You would go into this aquarium, and you would see. The, you, you would you would look at this giant shark tank, and it was the most horrifying thing you can imagine. And you're looking at it, right? And beyond the glass, it's just a dark chasm of a watery abyss. And you see these sharks swimming. And then from a distance, you can see a shark. A huge shark, I remember, from a far distance. And you can just see it barely. You can't see it completely. You cannot see its full self but you can see it as if looking at its shadow and I always thought what would happen if this glass broke it was so terrifying and you would see a diver in the tank swimming with these animals and I remember asking as a child why aren't they eating that man why aren't those sharks tearing that man apart and it was explained to me it's because the sharks have been fed. The sharks have been fed. Their stomachs are so full that they see no reason to eat this man. And the man is actually very safe because these sharks have been fully fed. And that right there was a valuable lesson as to how evil man is the shark because we because we, because we think you know we're watching discovery channel watching shark week we think these animals are just evil they're just they're just killing machines and they are killing machines but not in the sense of them going after you just to go after you they kill to eat a bear kills to eat. A snake kills to eat. A lizard kills to eat. Not man. Man is the only creature that kills for fun. Man is the only creature that kills out of sadistic pleasure. And it, it's so horrifying to think about this. It's so horrifying to think of this. And you and, and and I've asked myself, why is man this way? Why does man act in such a way? Why does man conceive of evil, evil ideas? There's that verse in the in the letter to the Romans. St. Paul in his letter to the Romans, he says. He speaks of the, the sons of Sodom, and he says, and then they began to do all sorts of evil things. They began, they began to, to hate their parents. They began to murder. They began to steal. And in that list, in the first chapter of Romans, St. Paul says that they, in, that they became inventors of evil things. Inventors of evil things. An animal does not invent evil things. An animal just is what it is. But a human being invents evil things for the sheer for the sheer desire to do evil. You can have humans uh, you can have humans live with enough money, with enough food, with shelter, and they will find evil things to do. All these all these people who have done mass shootings, 
in in America and also in Europe, because you you've had shootings in the past in Europe. Read about them if you want to. You'll see that they didn't kill because they were in poverty. They they killed for the sheer desire to kill, for fun. So why is this? Why are humans this way? Why? I thought about this for many years. And this is what I believe. And you can correct me on this if I'm wrong, if you think that I'm wrong. There is this verse in the in the Bible, in the New Testament, that is not so much discussed as are other verses. It's when St. Paul says that we are a little bit less than angels. We are lesser than the angels because we are made with flesh. We are made up of flesh. We have soul, we have spirit, but we have flesh. An angel is just a spirit. There's no flesh. So we are a little bit lesser than the angels. God created angels. He created all angels. All angels were created by God. And the angels were made with an they were made with an eternal knowledge of God. This is what Thomas Aquinas tells us, that angels were made with an eternal knowledge of God. I'm not a huge fan of Thomas Aquinas, but most of the stuff that he wrote was, I would say, pretty orthodox. And the angels were made by God, and the angels turned, a third of the angels turned against God. They turned against God. And because they had this eternal knowledge of God, there was no way that they would ever be rehabilitated. There was no way that they could ever be reformed nor brought back to the fold of the good angels. Once they rebelled, they became evil. They were evil and they will always be evil. So that is an angel. That's what happens to angels when they fall. The angels that said we will stand with God, they made that decision to stand with God. And because they have this eternal knowledge of good and they have this eternal knowledge of God, there is no way that they will ever turn evil, the good ones. The, the angels who have fallen, they made that firm decision. And once you make a firm decision like that, with the knowledge that an angel has, that angel is just evil. That's it. That angel is pure evil. Human beings were made, as St. Paul tells us, just a little bit less like angels in the sense that we are spirit, but because we have flesh, we are a little bit less than the angels. And because we were made in God's image, that means that we have a knowledge of evil. Just like the angels had a knowledge of evil. And because we have this knowledge of evil, we can turn to evil. Now, why would God allow human beings to turn to evil? That's another big question. And this is a question that I tried to answer. And I don't think that I've been able to fully answer that question, but I think that I've been able to partially answer that question. Partially, I think it's because human, human beings were made with free will. Now, why would God want us to have free will? Because God wants us to love him. Now, if I... I'll put it to you this way. There's a lot of lonely guys out there. A lot of lonely men out there. They have no woman who loves them. They think, you know, they think that their whole life, their whole identity as a man is defined by a woman loving them. And so they, they just want a woman to love them and this and that. And let's just forget, you know what, forget that. Forget forget the incel thing. Let's just say men, generally speaking, and women, generally speaking, they want love from the opposite gender. What 
when someone rejects them, they feel pain, emotional pain. When somebody accepts them, they feel fulfillment, right? So when a, when a man is loved by a woman, he has a sense of fulfillment. When a man is rejected by a woman, he feels a sense of pain, internal emotional heartache. But as painful as that is, when a woman chooses to love you, that is fulfilling, right? That's fulfilling because she has chosen to love you. Imagine if a woman was programmed to love you. Imagine if a woman only loved you because she was programmed to love you. Would that be fulfilling? It would be like loving a robot. So that would mean there is no love because there is no decision to love. There is only programming. So you would say, well, uh, this woman desires me, but you could never say that she loves you. It's the same way in the relationship between man and God. God wants us to choose to love him. So we're here on earth and we have what? We have all these different choices. We have this choice and that choice and this, and I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to do this, but then there's God. And God wants us to choose to love him. It's as simple as that. But if we are programmed to love him, if we're loving him like robots, well, that's not really love because you have not made a decision. You have not made the effort to resist all the other options to love God. You haven't made that effort. You've only been programmed to do that. So then it's not love. So God wants us to love him. He wants us to choose love. And because he wants us to choose love, then that implies that there is a that there is an option to love something else. And that something else is evil. So we can love God or we can love evil. And that's the reason why we have evil. Because human beings were designed with a choice. If we weren't designed with a choice, then we would not be able to choose to love God. St. John of Damascus tells us that the reason why God created humanity was because he wanted a creature who would love him. God is love. And when he created us in his image, he created us as a reflection of him. And so being a reflection of God, then we therefore were put on this earth to love him. Without that free will, then we're just robots and it's not love. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And so on this earth, we got all these humans walking around and some of them love God. A lot of them love evil. And a number of them are so evil that they want to do things for the love of evil. So it's like when God made humans, he thought, okay, I need to make, I want to make a creature that would love me, but I want them to choose to love me. If they don't choose to love me, then it's not really love. It's just programming. Okay. But if I give them the power to choose to love me, then I also give them the power to choose evil. And that is, I hate to, I hate to describe this in such a simple way, but that is the risk that God took. There's probably a better way that I can describe it, but that's the risk that God took to make man. And things got so bad that God told Noah, I regret making humanity. I regret making your kind. So that's it. That's why there's evil. That's why there's evil. We are made in God's image. 
therefore we have a knowledge of good and evil. We have an under we have an understanding of good and evil. Therefore, we can choose between good and evil, just like the angels were given the choice between good and evil. We are lesser than the angels, as St. Paul tells us. But the reason why we can be rehabilitated and the fallen angels cannot is because we do not have an understanding, an eternal understanding of God. The angels do. So when we choose evil or when we choose sin, we usually do so because of the flesh, the weakness of the flesh. So understanding this weak, this weakness of the flesh, which hinders us from, from having an eternal understanding of God, um, then there is a, a hope for rehabilitation. Now, there are some people who love evil so much that it's not even, it, it goes beyond the sins of the flesh. It becomes uh, utterly diabolical. And I think that those people are beyond rehabilitation. Uh uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, these guys were beyond rehabilitation. That's what I would say. 